first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello everyone, this is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler and thank you very much for joining us. We're live streaming here out of the Fox 12 Oregon Newsroom and we cover a wide range of topics throughout the day, including breaking news. When that happens, we'll be here with you for that. Right now, we're talking about something that, well, maybe everybody in the Pacific Northwest can do with clear skies. But assuming they happen tomorrow night, you might have the chance to see not just one comment, as I have right there, but two comets. Uh, so we're talking about Comet Lemon and another Comet Swan. And we're going to get the details on this, what we should know, how close are they really getting to Earth, and how can you spot them. All of that we're going to do right now with Jim Todd from OMSI. And Jim, always great to have you here on the show to break this down for everybody to understand, you know, what's going on there in our night skies. And this is, sounds like a pretty unique moment. So I was hoping we'd start off if you could tell us about Comet Lemon and, and what exactly this is and why it's such a special moment that it's here. Well, there's been a lot of excitement around the Comet Lemon because this may be what we call the best comet for 2025, which is being close and bright. So there's a lot of excitement uh, coming up on this. And tomorrow night on the 21st, it may be our best shot to see Comet Lemon for a couple of reasons. One is that uh, if we have a new moon and we have clear skies. So that's a good combination for Oregon, really, um, to be able to see the comet. So you, you look towards the uh, northwest right after sunset, and you look for the bright star Arcarius, an easy to find way, uh, the Arcarius, that you make an arch with the handle of the Big Dipper and go to the first bright star that you see on the arch of the Big uh, Dipper handle. And then above that, You'll see a fuzzy spot, it may be about 90 minutes or a little bit after that, after sunset. You'll start seeing what hopefully will be a, a comet. It's still at a magnitude of four. Your best bet is to get binoculars or get well, your fancy camera, do a long mm -hmm. exposure. You get more details of this comet. And the comet appears to be kind of a greenish color. And so that's kind of one of the things you want to look for. When you look at that comet, you'll see a bright point of dot. There you go, the bright point of dot, uh, the kind of greenish in color. Now you're looking at the coma. And that's the, the atmosphere around the nucleus is probably about two miles wide, 52 million miles away. And you're seeing the dust tail. And the dust tail is pointing away from the sun. So we have our best shot, perhaps tomorrow night and for the rest of the week, it's going to be in that neighborhood uh, for the viewing of the Comet Lemon. So there's, there's a lot of excitement about that. That's, so, so how exactly, just to clarify a couple of those things too, how close is it actually coming to Earth? Well, it's about as close as you'll get, about roughly 52 million miles away. So it passed by the sun and it's going toward close proximity to the Earth. So 52 million miles, that sounds a long way, but uh, uh, that's a good viewing for a comet uh, for this time of year. And how often does this comet come around? Well, and that's a good question. Uh, every single day there's a comet in the sky. It's always common, but they're so far away, they're small and faint. They're just beyond basically the human eye can ever see, but there's always a common in the sky every single day. There's millions of them. They all originate from the Earth clouds. But every once in a while, they get close enough to the Earth be able to get in view for us, like the comet uh, Lemon and Swan that's happening. And so is it rare? It's rare that we can see them with the human eye. Four is about the limit. Uh, when you get in, anything uh, above four, four, five, six, seven, then you need uh, equipment. You need binoculars and good dark skies. All right. And then you mentioned there's another comet as well, Swan. And so is this something that people could, are also going to be able to see with their naked eye? Well, it's just fading a little bit from what, what I, I gather, and it's in the south, where we have the comet in the north. You can turn around and look for the comet in the south. This is Comet Swan. It's in the neighborhood of, of Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is toward the south, and it, it will appear and then disappear because it's going to quickly move out of our view uh, from our uh, perspective. So that particular comet is only about 24 million miles away. So it's a little bit closer 
but it's fading quickly because it's moving away from us. Right? So one thing you have to keep in mind when you talk about these two comets, and, uh, we, the best viewing is actually around the new moon. When you have the full moon that's coming up on November 6th, you're gonna, it's going to make it harder and harder to see, not speaking of weather, but we, the phase of the moon does make a difference in how you want to view the comet. So that new moon is going to be a big benefit then for this. So for people at home, you know, what is the right time range to take a look for these comets? Right after sunset. And the reason for that, the comet's visibility associated to the location of the comet to the sun. And that's when it produces the brightest moment, the brightest tail, because the sun is reflecting off of the dust tail of the comet. And so that's why you always say, look right after sunset, it will be just above in the vicinity of the sun, and that uh, the lemon is just above the sun in the northeast. What's actually, that's the good news, that it's in what's called a circumpolar region, that will be visible all night long, um, because it's so close to the uh, star Polaris. And our curious, it will be visible all night. But if you look at Thomas Swan in the south, you're going to only have a few hours before it disappears because that's the uh, view in the south, that's the, along the ecliptic. That's where the sky rises and set in the west. So it's, it's kind of a lot of fun you, you're to, to learn about all of these things about the comet, where they come from, how to view them. But these are probably going to be the best comet for 2025 for this year. Will it be possible to see both of these comets or will it be so possible to see the comet from the city of like Portland, from a city, or do you need to get out into the country with less lights? Ideally, if you really want to get a good opportunity to see it, get away from the city lights, um, because that's when you get your best bet to see the coma, you see the tail, and uh, using your camera. So get away from city light, find a good safe location where you get a good view of the north and the south, and a good, and good parking space, and do your homework with your camera, and get them exposure, then it's something worth uh, admiring because this is, this is one of those things that this is a great opportunity to do it. And using your phone will be enough. Like if you can zoom in on it and take a look that way, yeah. or you mentioned exposure, should you have it sit there at yeah. a certain point in the sky for a while? Yeah, with that, and you put, best you put it on a tripod so you don't have a lot of a wiggle. When you use zoom, it tends to, even the slightest motion will make it uh, wiggle. And so put it on a tripod, do a long exposure, only maybe two or three, four or five seconds, and, and uh, you point it toward the comet, you'll actually start seeing the bright coma, and if you're lucky, you might be able to see the tail. So it's kind of challenging, but it's, so, it's always a lot of fun. Yeah, that sounds like a great, actually, experiment to do at night. Just put it on a tripod, see what you can get. And you said the comet's going to be there most of the night, right, for people to look at? Well, right. for Comet Lemon, it's in the circumpolar, meaning it'll be visible from sunset to sunrise. That's the cool part about that uh, comet. With Swan, you only have a few hours, and it's fading. So the best bet this week would be to look for Comet Lemon, and then look while you're at it, you're lucky, look for Comet Swan. All right. Anything else that people should know? Well, the, 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 people are always asking, is there going to be any more comments in the future? They're hard to predict. They really are. Um, you, you can't uh, predict them when they're going to be bright, when they'll be close, and so on. So uh, this is a rare event that we have two comets. I can't remember the last time we have two comets in the sky that are visible. It's usually always one, and it's come and gone. But two, this is a great show. So uh, it's kind of nice to have two uh, to, to take a look at. Yeah, that the combination with the new moon and clear skies, I mean, that's that's pretty rare, especially this time of year for October yeah, to have clear see. skies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're lucky as Oregonians to be able to have clear skies when an event like this to happen. Well, fantastic. Well, Jim, thank you, as always, for explaining this and walking through it. So for everybody out there, this is a chance, a unique opportunity to take a look at all of that. Um, I, I would guess maybe like the coast range of the Cascades would probably be a good spot. Well, the Cascades is more transparent. The coast may have too much humidity. And uh, so uh, if you go to the coast, and I'm sorry, the, the Cascades, uh, you have higher elevation, drier sky, and greater chance of clear weather than you do in the valley. Because at this time of year, we get a lot of um, air movement coming off from the ocean. 
and create the fog and the morning clouds and the humidity starts to go up. But if you go to the central Oregon area, which is always ideal, it's dark, it's dry, high elevation. And so for those folks over there, they're going to have a great view of the comet uh, coming up in the next few nights. All right. Jim, thank you so much for joining us. I always appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Greg. And for everybody watching, again, this is Fox 12 Now. As I mentioned, we are live streaming here, so we do cover breaking news as well or anything else that happens between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, I'll be here for you with that. But thank you very much for joining us. I, as I mentioned, I, I do appreciate it. So we're live streaming every weekday starting at 1 going throughout the afternoon. And feel free to download that Fox 12 Oregon app. That's a great way to watch us live or after the fact as well. But I'll talk to you soon. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox